Hey guys and welcome back to a new Webflow tutorial on this channel. Uh, in the last tutorial we focused on the web design structure on structural elements in HTML and today in today's tutorial I would like to start over creating a new project and we are going to focus on navigation. So let's create a new project. I'm going for plank project and we are calling it a super cool project. <laughs> okay. So this is our project and the design interface that you've seen in the first and second tutorial already. And we are going to create a new uh, element, which is just down here on the components and it's called navbar. We are going to use this navbar, this pre-created navbar uh, to create such a navigation for our design. But I would like to jump into Bl Unsplash and to select a nice background photo for our design. So the last design in the last video wasn't that great. Uh, so let's get back to some visually appealing work. And it's downloaded and we can simply add it onto our background. So simply select the background layer, uh, not the layer, but the like the body. Um, and we can go here to our background uh, part and we can simply select add background image. And we go to choose image and we need to upload or drop files over there. So we have to upload files right here and I could click upload or I simply drag it from over here over to this asset manager. Now it's loading up, it's loading up and after it's loaded, we will be able to paste it into this background position. So choose image and we can simply select it. So we have it right here. It's uploaded successfully and we can say we want to let it cover the whole screen or let it just contain, uh, which means if we uh, get rid of the tile that it will just, uh, uh, that it will just uh, in the center position have this like 100% uh, height. But I would like to have it covering the whole screen. Of course, it's cutting off some of these areas at the bottom, but it's fine. And this is going to be our background for today's tutorial. And now let's jump to the final and main reason for this video. And this is the navbar. So the navbar could simply be dragged over into our body. We could, um, right now, if we had some uh, sections, also put it in a section or above a section. So it's basically good to have it on your body, but you could place it basically anywhere, also in the footer area of your page. Uh, and we are going to work with that now. Okay, so we have our brand area right here and if we jump into our layer hierarchy or element hierarchy we see that uh, we have the navbar and navbar contains a container to make it fit uh, our like the most used devices obviously then we have the brand which is the logo and we have the nav menu with these three links and we have a menu button that's only visible on a mobile device. So if I switch on to the mobile design, to the responsive web uh, version, then we see that we have this menu button right there. Okay, that's fine. Uh, how about editing this brand? So we could simply switch over to our style tab and we can change some of the aspects right here. So we could also add a background image, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I have my logo in my inside my folder and I'm going to add a new image. We can choose the image and it's basically opening up the asset manager again. So we can drag it onto our manager. It's loading and we should see it in a few seconds. Um, I don't want it to be tiled. I want it to cover the whole area or to have it uh, containing it. Of course, this time I don't want to have it covering all of the space, but having the contain feature. Let's uh, change the position and center it up basically. And 
right, right now we can also continue creating other links. Um, it's basically already done because we have these items right here. So you could of course still edit them by double clicking them. For example, we could say this is the portfolio and you see the width of these parts right here is changing in relation to the content that's displayed within such a uh, menu item, such a nav item. Um, I would like to change the nav styling because this like gray bar right here doesn't look that fine. And what we will do is to check if we are in, if we selected the, the right item and of course it's the nav bar. Go to style and right now we could add a background. We could say we want to have a like black color um, and we could probably even say we want to have a gradient, which is cool. And I have this one right here. What can we do right there? Radial. You have some uh, possibilities here. But how to change the color? Ah, double click it. Then you can change the color and we could change it to a zero opacity styling. So then get rid of the fill and you see that we have some sort of a gradient up there which is looking kind of cool. Um, double click this one right here and maybe also change the opacity a little bit so it's easier to read our text but we of course have to change uh, the color of, it, of the text. Of course the logo should actually be uh, white right now. I don't have a I don't have a white version of it ready, um, but we could actually jump to these nav items right here and it's easy to change them uh, into a, to a white color. How about adding a class to these? How about adding a class to these nav items? So I call them nav links. Maybe we can also select multiple items right there. No, that's not possible. Okay, this is nav links. Oops, uh, it's the same. And we could simply also tab it and select it from down there. And simply by selecting a color, it will also automatically change the color of these other uh, nav links because of the class, of course. So we can play around with it a bit, check what, what's looking good and whatnot. Maybe like that. And you see that if we click this highlighted icon right here, um, you see some kind of relation to other items. So if you click this one, you see this will affect three elements, which are these three. And uh, also the value from body. So if we like, uh, if we if we determined a nav a link color in our body element, it would also be affected by this uh, setting down here, and we would see what it would do. If you selected the brand from these uh, settings right here, you could go to the brand settings, and we can say we want to link something. So. I could say this is going to link to the index or to to any like, I don't know, the in index HTML. We could also say that it should link to a different page and we currently only have one page. So if we go to a different page, um, this is simply by adding a page and giving it a name like in the end, we have portfolio and contact in our menu. So we're going to use that. Then we could also add. Ah, okay, so in this plan that I'm currently still on, we can only add two pages. That's fine. Um, so for example, if we select this portfolio link, we could choose the portfolio tab. And if we uh, have a contact page, we could simply select it from there. We don't have to link it or to know any links. Uh, as long as it's in the same project, we could simply select it from down here. So that's quite good. 
and this one the branch should also link to our home so that's a usual so that's a normal uh, usability pattern to have a logo linking to the home uh, starting page and we are going to do the same as well so now we have the nav um, and going back to our layer hierarchy or to our like element navigator we could also jump into adding some more elements so of course i would like to have another to have a new section and the section shouldn't be inside our brand but it should be below our nav bar so i would like to have it just right there so it's just below the nav bar i'm going to place in a container so we have th just this space available for our content and we could simply do more things like adding a heading we could also add a like paragraph and we could also add a new button uh, that is like helping us as something like an introductory Going back to our style page, we now select some new colors that are looking good. Once we selected these colors, we will be able to uh, change up some more stuff. So we have the button right here. And um, of course, now let's talk about something like spacing. Um, we can go up right here to the layout tab and we could say we want to have oops a larger margin for example like 120 pixels just like that and the button could also have a larger margin to the top just like that we could say that the text that we have right here should have a bigger time should have a bigger uh, line height so it's easier for the user to read it. And we could also change the font size a little bit, just like that. So how about adding a div? A div block will help us to uh, group content in it. So if I'm just dragging the div somewhere right here, it will create some more space, but we can easily drag in all of our content uh, in there, whoops, like sorry like we have to drag it in there like that and also the button should be dragged inside to the div what we could do right now is to say that the div should have a background color how about a white background color or a dark one i don't know we will oops we will find out i'm going to select the dark background background color and i'm going to change the opacity a little bit. We can even add a shadow, a box shadow should be white, uh, should be should be black, sorry. And we can increase the blur a little bit. And also the size. Maybe let's decrease the opacity some more. So this would look really weird. Um, Having a nice little box shadow there looks good. Maybe we could uh, change our plans and make it white again. And what I wanted to do actually, what I wanted to show you is not just the margin that we just used, but also using padding. So if I hold down my, my option or alt key and I drag on uh, like the top or the bottom side, it will affect both the bottom and the top uh, area. If I hold down Alt or Option and go for left and right, we see that we have some padding from the left and right and it's going to be the same amount. And I could also hold down Shift and select any of these areas and it would allow us to place the content uh, with a nice little padding from from like very every side now we have some weird space right there i think it's because of the heading so we have heading uh, 120 pixels if we select 
this zero. And if we go back to the div block, we could still uh, add some padding right there, some margin right there. You see that it already looks kind of good. Maybe we go back and select a black color. like there then we already have a really cool layout um and we have the nav bar ready even though the logo is not wide it should be wide i hope you uh, forgive me that and we have our content area and we worked with paddings and margins today so these three topics are so relevant to like every website that you have um i mean the design of this page isn't perfect it's and it's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to just show you the features of having a nav bar and how to work with it and how to work with margins and paddings. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have like questions, if you want to see something else that I didn't show already, then just leave a comment in the video section. In the description of this video, you will find the link to Webflow so you can check it out as well. It's fully free to download and it's really giving us designers the great ability to design without having to think about code. And that's awesome. I'm, hoping, I'm really hoping you like these videos and we see us in the next one. Bye. Truth and money never lie, no I'm the one, yeah I'm the one